Well, howdy, folks. I'm Max Stevens. I buy old records. Sometimes I get them home, and I gotta work with them. Here I am in my brand new redesigned uh, thing here. Sometimes words fail me. I bought some 78s the other day. Like to hear they are. And they're pretty cool. You got the Sugar Man. That's a rare record. Can be rare. It's sold at, you know, 50 bucks to 150 bucks. Depends. Notice that sticker. Ugh. Oh, man, that's a good one. Teddy Reynolds doing Suicide Blues. Notice that sticker. Ugh. Well, there's Smokey Hog. Sticker. Wish these were Sun Records running in order like this. That, that'd be a nice thing to find. There's old Smokey again sticker Ugh. and there was a fifth one as well well here it was ain't got no sticker but i'll tell you what there was one on this side right there and it ain't there no more because we're going to take stickers off today ain't that great yeah we like to do surgery here live next door to a medical school one time and they taught me everything i needed to know okay so you got this right Two kinds of stickers, generally. There's the uh, uh, water-soluble ones, which you put, spit, rub that spit on, spit on the record, but it's spit. You got to do it. Spit and prolonged rubbing. You'll work a sticker off that way, and if you know, you're all right with it, you're not going to damage the record that much. Other times, though, and some people love Goo Gone, but I like the smell and the high-produced Baronsonol better. As I've said before, God bless the Ronsonol people. This ah, is clear scotch tape on very fragile little paper label. So, and it's a piece of cardstock that it's written on. I hate these people. Well, anyway, you saw me pick these the other day if you're keeping up. So... What I do, I get out to where it, fortunately, they put it on the record itself. And I say fortunately because this gives me a place to start teasing up the edge first. I need some light. Oh, that's better. I get that microphone out of my way, too. I'd say I've got too many microphones, but that is not a state of existence I could ever live in. They're never enough. And yet I'll only record with one at a time. So what you do, you start slowly peeling, but you drench that bad boy down. When it starts drying out, as it will, and it'll stain the label at first, you just sit there, wait, and be patient. That stuff will go away. Look at there. We got that much of it gone. Now I've got to start teasing this a little bit. Because there's two pieces of tape holding this down. Look at there. Since they didn't glue it down into place, that makes my job a lot more easy and gratifying. Now, when you can pull straight up on whatever that is, in this case, it's an easy fix. You go to the back side of where that glue is on the tape, put run your little old bead, and if you yank it, I'll slap you. No, you let it come up on its own accord. Then you get your white cloth because ah, that's a way to clean records. I'm not going to do this on old Paramounts or on records that are a sandwich type composite like early Columbia's. But this stuff, it's a buck at the Dollar Tree. You know, where Grandpa goes and buys the cat food, even though he doesn't have cats, and cheap tobacco. Well, I don't think they sell tobacco there. Anyway, spray it. Gloss that in like that. It's foaming window cleaner. This record has had a little bit of heat uh, exposure in the past. So this is not going to do anything to this side other than clean it. And it may play with noise. Fortunately, of the records here, this is the least desirable. But would you look at that? That sticker's not there anymore. Man, I like that. I'm going to do all of them and then do that more expensive one dead last. So I hope you learned something there. If you done, it ain't my fault. You're teachable. I'm teachable. 
We'll talk about other stuff later. More on that uh, cleaning stuff too. I know people are rolling their eyes. Trust me, especially when you've got big piles of very dirty records. Ain't nothing better than foam and window cleaner and the blue microfiber. Make sure there's several different types. I buy mine at Harbor Freight or Walmart. Generally, they're good. Stay safe. Love you long time. Well, good morning to you folks. I'm Brother Mac. I buy old records. I, I don't know, pretty much worship at the altar of records since it makes me my uh, living and such, and it's fun. I like it. I don't ever consider that I really work. Ah, so, today I also make records. You've seen the aforementioned Presto K8 from 1936. I've redone all my area here, though. I've got a brand new uh, L-shaped desk second hand and uh i did find these this is cool i bought these a few weeks ago gray flexographs they go on that little weird dictation machine because that's what they were for some hot shot suit type would plug in his little machine he'd get that little microphone thing he hit it turn on the machine and say miss parker transcribe this for me and then he'd dictate some rambling boring thing about bottom line or something i don't know we're not dictating bottom line what we're doing is it, it, we're cutting records good stuff we're going to do a test on one here it's fun just like all fredonia issues you've got to use an, a heavy arm turntable in a 78 and then it fairly screams off the turntable play it with something else and you might get skipping unless you put weight on the turntable and you got to use the 78 as i've already said anyway i've prepped this one i had to put it on a donor pvc 78 one that had some mistakes on it so i can use it as a, a donor it has the hole there the pilot hole that's going through the uh, pvc hole there in the middle you just kind of have to line it up to get it right put this on to help hold it down clamp it a bit and then we start turning and for today i have decided to do elvis's slow one minute and a few seconds version of blue moon of kentucky it's quite nice Ooh, see that the caliphone doubles as a turntable for panning look how smooth that pan action is anyway I hate saying the word pan because it's Spanish for bread and bread is forbidden on my keto diet. So what I will do, I will start the uh, vacuum cleaner that's down here, hold it there to catch a thread or swore for vinyl pubes and uh, once that needle is down and cutting I will hit the source, the source goes through this magical little nothing box there, and I've already set my levels, because you don't want to overload it, you don't want to underload it, so engage worm drive and then we start cutting and I can talk during this because it's not going to make any difference it's not listening to me. If I were to yell real loud, it would get on the record. We might try that someday. But right now, Elvis is partially into his uh, rendition of uh, Blue Moon of Kentucky. This is what they were doing an hour or two or three, maybe a day earlier, I don't know, when they cut the B-side to his first record, Sun 209. And it's quite a marvelous recording. So if all goes well, this comes out okay, we'll have a nice playable uh, record of that. Probably for the flip side, I'll put the uh, rehearsal or earlier outtake of the flip side. That's all right. Not that's all right, mama, like everybody writes. <clears throat> the name of the song is that's all right. You go online and everybody puts that's all right, mama. That's all right with parentheses, mama. No, rolled up newspaper to the nose. No, bad, no, don't do that. Even knowledgeable people tend to do that. So uh, we're just about done. We are done. I'll usually let it have a five or six count before I terminate the recording. 
catch anything that's still there. And we shut that off. Disengage worm drive. Disengage motor. I'm gonna turn it off for a moment. Don't want to overheat those ancient tubes. So next, I'm gonna hit this thing with a little bit of window cleaner. Give it a little quick clean. Oh, and you folks at home, when you wipe stuff down with your rag, don't use the one you use for your precious essence, okay? Just don't pass that on to customers. Nobody wants that. I know a guy that used to do that deliberately. <laughs> so when we're done, we let the caliphone warm up, put the clamp back on. Flexible records tend to uh, slide around a bit, and get you all angered. But now, if the record gods are happy with me this will play without any skips or problems and if there's problems I'm gonna leave them up here for you to see problem it's too low of a volume I wasn't paying attention to my source. So guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna record it again. Okay, so I've got my volume set again. The needles are deflecting nicely. I thought I did that before. In fact, I've gotta back it off now just a little. And we're gonna do a second round with this. Round two has been commenced. Okay, let's do the playback on this one. Should be loud and astonishingly proud. Yeah. Of course, I forgot that eBay, or not eBay, where are we at? We're at YouTube. Of course, I forgot that on YouTube, they'll probably uh, cut that audio. So I'm sure brother producer up it down in his uh, uh, way underground concrete bunker where he does production work on all of this. He'll probably edit out, but he'll leave in a few seconds worth. It plays great. I like that. I'm going to go ahead and put the flip side on. You be good. Uh, do what your mama tells you, unless she's a psychopath. Woof. And uh, just have a good time. Take care of one another. Love one another. Something like that. I read that in Fortune Cookie somewhere. Be good.